Senator Shapiro, is it raining in Texas? Not today. Okay. And it probably we won't wish be, it was, but it's not today. And it probably won't be raining after this budget is considered either. You know, help me with this. And yes, I was there for all seven weeks and other weeks. And I know. And I do want to say publicly how much I appreciate you, Senator Davis and Senator Duncan. It wasn't for lack of effort that we're not moving forward. And it's not over with either. I mean, you know, maybe there's some things that we can do with 12. Six days. Well, that's fine. But I mean. Maybe there's some things we can do with 12 in order to get it out of here. But I just want to stop for one moment, though, and talk about public school finance. And the reality is, is that it seems like about every time this session, I know a lot about public school finance, and when I leave here, I try to forget it all. And many of us do the same thing. You know, we know that we have a, I think it's called a property tax school fund or something. What do we call it? The property fund, where property tax relief fund. Yeah, that's the name of it. And we, okay, okay. And we know this. We know that in order to deal with the tax compression that we did, we established that fund and several revenues in that fund in order to uh, make up for the um, compression. And that ends up being, and I'm, I'm not going to get into all of that, but the, the structural deficit, as we call it. No, you call it. Okay, <laughs> then, then most people call it. Okay. But the reality is this, is that we're now in Senate Bill 22, and this is going back to what Senator Vanderbilt was talking about. We are, in that particular bill, we're now saying that we are passing a law that says literally that the property, that the, the deficit – doesn't exist anymore, the $4 billion. And so we are underfunding public school finance members, as you well know, some $4 billion in the state, even though we've had an increase in the number of people that are coming into our, the students that are coming to our public schools. And yet still, the debate, the, the giant elephant, and no pun intended, on this floor is whether or not we're going to use the rainy day fund, that's why I was asking whether it was raining. I know it's bright out there, as a method of finance. Regardless of what is passed, whether it's the Senate version or the House version, Senator Ogden, we're going to see teachers lay it off. You would agree with that, wouldn't you? Yes. Senator Shabiro? Yes. Okay. So we have kids in the pipeline. We have kids that have decided that they want to be teachers. One of the programs that uh, we always look at is the program for our young teachers that are going into our schools. But yet still what we're doing, and it's not, going to, it's not going to ruin the entire public education system, but the reality is we can do better if we have the political will to do better. And as my desk mate often says, if we can be independent thinkers. I know we have attacks from the left. I've been attacked. We have attacks from the right. You've been attacked. But the question is, Senator Patrick, can we do better and be independent thinkers on this floor? In Article 9 of the budget, and I, frankly, thank you for allowing me to work on it. Governor, thank you for appointing me to the Finance Committee. But in Article 9, see, if you're about to take out a provision a writer that basically says, members, that that money goes to public schools. If the comptroller doesn't certify that there's $3 billion, then we take $3 billion of the rainy day fund, Senator Seliger, and we put it into our, fund, into our schools. Senator Shapiro, teachers make on an average of, what, about $48,000 a year? Let's see. And somebody do the math for me right fast. What is 48000 and the $3 billion, Senator Zaffarini? Because the only person on the floor could even do that quickly would be you. The point I'm making is this. The point I'm making is this. Members, we have sufficient revenue in order to make certain that we do what's in the best interest of our education system in the state of Texas. The question is whether we have the political will to do it. Now, I'm not sitting up here saying we spend all of the rainy day fund. We don't do that. And I understand that the House 
and the governor has basically said to the Senate and our leadership that we're not spending any more of the rainy day fund. But I say to you, should we as a body, as Democrats, as Repo no, as Texans, send a statement that we believe that we should fund public education in the state of Texas as our number one priority. We politic. We campaign on education, what we're going to do with the education system. But we can't summon the political carriage today in this chamber to say that the Senate of the state of Texas believes that we should fund public education and we should use the rainy day fund as a source to do that, Senator Shapiro. I didn't get up here to make a, a speech. But I know what Senate Bill 22 does. We underfund public education by $4 billion. And I know many people say that Robert Scott, who all of us voted to confirm, said we only need $6 billion. I wonder why he said that. I won't second guess him. But I also understand that he's having to terminate several people over at TEA in order to meet the reductions that are required. I know that. And so as we deliberate, members, on this budget, I want you to keep in mind that you campaign on education in the state. I want you to keep in mind, as I think Senator Whitmer said, probably the first day, Senator Ellis, um, when we began taking up the budget, I want you to put a face on it. I want you to think about the school teachers that we could save if indeed we decided to dip in, into our rainy day fund. So, you know, and I guess the question is, if we dip into the rainy day fund, could we not save some of the teachers that would otherwise be terminated because of lack of funding for our education system in the state of Texas? I think they're two different questions. I think obviously putting more money into any system, you're going to be able to do things differently. I think the idea that we are not fully funding public education is certainly one that we all have to agree to. We have cut, and we know we've cut. But I believe that we have four... 4.3, but now 4.8 million students in the state of Texas. And I believe with the $6 billion that we're putting into the system, is it enough? Probably not. Is it devastating? Absolutely not. The average school district, and you know the variance from one end of the spectrum to the other, Houston, Dallas, at the top end, and very small school districts at the bottom end, Canadian and those at the bottom end, many of them are in your district. Lubbock, Lubbock's not a small district. But, but what we're saying is that each and every one of them at, under this budget have got to recognize that we are in, and I, I agree with everyone, we're trying to get out of it. The first call on any money will go to public education. The idea that we can find more money Property taxes are going to go up. We are convinced of that. As they do, that money goes directly to the schools, directly to the schools. When we keep looking at things that are getting better, when we come back and the GR looks better because the sales tax is higher and other things are higher in two years, this is a two-year system that, in my view, has got to be evaluated for what we see today in public education. And we can't say, well, let's borrow in order to see that this is going to work. We've got to be looking out for the next day. Let's not forget we put three, almost $4 billion of the rainy day fund in this budget to fix this year the deficit for this year, 2010-2011. Mm -hmm. So we've got to make sure that there's something out there if we don't meet those concerns at the end of the next year. So I, I believe we've done, we've done a little bit of both. We've looked at both ends of the spectrum, and we've made both ends try to work. And this is not a perfect, perfect bill, but let's not let perfect get in the way of good.